Uh, welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We have Rob Liefeld uh, in the house with us, man. And we're going to take a look at uh, New Mutants 87. Rob, thank you so much for showing up, man. Yeah, I'm here and I'm hot. Let's go. Yeah, dude, you're spicy. My, my head's on fire. You're spicy. Our, our pre chat. I'm already hot. Let's go. <laughs> Bought these books off the off the racks, and uh, the the name that I knew on the cover was McFarlane. Uh, I wasn't familiar with your work bef before then, but I was grabbing Spider Man's, I was grabbing uh, Hulk's from first grade forward. That's a name I recognize, okay. but this badass image, this is second grade for me. Yeah, and, see, and seeing this badass dude with that name I knew, jumped in, jumped on board with this man, instantly attracted. Yeah, I always wonder where, because I don't remember what put it on my radar. It's funny that we both bought this as our first issue, but I do, it might have been a Marvel Age or something. I was just in. So it was whatever I was reading promo that looked cool, and I feel like it might have been a Marvel Age that was highlighting this new character that was coming out. So how does Tom, uh, Tom, all this Tom talk, how does uh, McFarlane get involved as Inker here? Is it your suggestion, Rob? No, no, 100%. I, I would never, um, unlike the other guys, uh, in my generation, for, for instance, let me give you a, when Jim Valentino got Guardians of the Galaxy, he told me, I'm going to have a different person ink every cover. I think that would be a blast. And as you know, he did. And I was able, I think over a couple of years, I, I ended up, I think, inking two of them, maybe only one. I'm not really sure. But he, that was deliberate. I, uh, it speaks to how I am now in the business. I don't have a lot of friends. I don't have a lot of acquaintances. I don't play politics. I don't like um, I don't like favors. I don't I, I you know, I just uh, I, I'm happy to grant them. But often when you ask for them, there's so much attached. Uh, no, this is uh, Todd, as I covered on my podcast, um, I, I think it's an episode of observations called the L boys. And honestly, I, I could just stop the whole podcast there because that one was like time travel, because that is a 48 hour period that I will never forget. But Eric Larson and I had a pre-established relationship uh <clears throat> he and i uh had seen each other at a lot of shows so when it comes to san diego 1988 uh suddenly I, I get this guy in the jean jacket walking up with the sweet like like uh permed pompadour he looks like he stepped off stage with the stray cats i mean he was kind of like like this very unique cool looking like uh you know rockabilly dude and then he opens his mouth and I, <laughs> oh Liefeld, oh, because he knew, he knew, he knew uh, Eric. They had known each other previously from different shows. Uh, I, I think even one or both of them had spent the night at each other's place at that point. So they hadn't established because Eric's like, oh, it's Todd. This is Todd. And I'm like, oh, this is, you know, I've been following Todd. Okay. And, uh, and he goes, oh, Liefeld. I, I, now I'm at Liefeld and Lee and Larson. I, I, I just got to meet Lim. And I'll have met the L boys. So I cover this in fat detail on the L boys episode. So he's telling me, I mean, all he's doing is talking about how he has a one up on me and Larson. I mean, it, it's, it's the, it's the best flex. And, and I swear to you, if you think I talk a lot, we did not get a word in it for maybe <laughs> two and a half hours because it started on the floor. We walk the floor, we leave, we go in the elevator, we go in the hotel room, we go, I mean, out to the to the restaurant. At that point, he goes, oh, I, "I'd like to ink you. Oh, I'd be I'd be cool. I'd be cool." Because he he kept telling us how important it was to ink himself and how he loves inking. And that's when I learned, like, when when we were, when we were like, "Who would you like to ink the most?" And and I said, "I'd like to ink John Buscema," because I I think nobody gives him a modern line. And Todd's like, "Oh, I'd like to ink Gene Colan." And to this day, I, I can't see that. It's the one guy I'm like. <laughs> I don't, I can't see Todd Ink and Gene Cohen, but he's like, I, I, I could ink like covers, not a full double. I, I, I could ink covers. And I'm like, huh? So, you know, I, I literally believe that my editor, Bob Harris, called me and said, Todd was in the office and said that you guys talked about him and he wants to ink some covers. Are you cool with that? And I said, yeah, I'll go, I'll, I'll do it. Sure. Um, and that began uh, him you know, I would draw the covers and ship them to Todd until I decided to not have Todd ink the covers. Um, so there you go. Long answer, 
Hope you enjoyed that. Let's 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 hop in. Uh, but first, like you mentioned, the Rob Servation podcast. T- yeah. Let the people know, man, so that we can uh, send some people your way. No, look, man, I I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, uh, what am I saying? Uh, apparently, some new mutants page is about to go for forty three k. So I I guess there's a heritage auction, and it's uh, it's it's new mutants pages. So it's so key to what we're talking about. I didn't ask this. My buddy who works at Apple is an avid collector. So, um. Yeah, I have a podcast called Rob Observations. It's just a giant Liefeld word salad. No, I, I it's just about stuff I love. Okay, um, and and uh, and and I like I said I, I cover a lot of this, but I I wanted I, when you asked to do this, so I got my copies to uh, and I'll, I'll whip them out. So whenever you want to start going awesome. through New Mutants eighty seven, like I said, the cover, um, you know, fun stuff. Uh, it, it was fun. You know, I I. I I think of Todd as one of the best inkers in comics, period. I think his uh, greatest application, not to take away anything else, I revisit his Spider-Man and I'm blown away because I don't know what it's like to be your age reading Todd Spider-Man, but I knew what it was be- to be my age and have Spider-Man reinvigorated for the first time in a decade because he is he had grown, he had become so damn boring, okay? Oh, yeah. So, so uh, we were you know, there, I would man. just... It was really admirable. Yeah, and, I, and you guys were, you know, again, I, I get, when I talk to Robert Kirkman and he tells me, because he was younger, ingesting this stuff as you guys were. So it's great to hear back what you guys were going through. But yeah, no, it was great. So yeah, Todd, long and- story, wanted to embellish it. Todd, again, wanted to do these covers, thought it would be cool. I thought it would be great. I did not know, however, how beloved these would grow. You can't see into the future. Right. And see how much people love every time we work together in, in, in people like they all say you guys became a merged style. And I think, I think they're right. I think yeah. Liefeld and McFarlane became McLeifeld. <laughs> so before we crack this open, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Cougar and uh, the, the original cover that had Cougar on there. And there would be the, like in Marvel age, Cougar design that you would use in young blood. So yeah. You give them cable, but you keep Cougar. Like, well, uh, what's so, the thought? So there? I gave the, so well as we open this up. I gave them almost the all the thirteen new characters you're going to see here. Oh, so yeah. Ed and Jim, here's the deal: what you're asking me about is creation. And you know, as we go through this, it's this love, this this. Um, I don't have any hate with this because I cut a better deal than everybody who worked with me, and that's a fact. And Marvel will tell you that, even though they don't like to tell you about that, but they'll tell you that. Um, young Robbie Liefeld, maybe the best thing he was, was a businessman. And he knew what he was, what was going on in terms of, wait, I can get character, uh, you know, what, what's it, what's it called? Um, what they call is it? Is participation. It, uh, yes. There you go. Character participation, participation agreements, character shares. So I was in, I was all in. And, uh, <clears throat> so I'm throwing all these characters cause you know, honestly, maybe the most important thing we can do as I wheel slightly out of frame is uh grab so i bought these omnibuses recently and they took me back to the pre new mutants rob liefeld and why this um book was such a shit show and it was a shit show uh and it was a shit show because uh it didn't really offer anything exciting it was like bad They'd call it bad YA, you know, fantasy. Um, You know why you didn't know about this book and you hadn't come to it yet? Hey, look at Bird Brain, everybody. Hey, kids, (laughs) that's who your moms, you know, want you to grow up to be is Bird Brain. That's who you want. You want, holy shit, you know, and and especially whenever these new mutants episodes. (laughs) Oh, God. Come on, man. When I was a kid, I'm like, who thought this was a good idea? Like the, 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 and, and look at these, I, I don't want to, you know, this was the villain they were battling guys. This guy with something on his head and, 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 and thick spectacles. Okay. Like, so he, he, he'd have, he had extra bulging eyes. Um, I mean, th- this was th- this and, and freaking the God of inking is inking this, the God of inking Terry, like this, this, was your brother's new mutants right there. This is what you were getting. Look at look at look at this. Look at this. So so let's have context here. Let me try and get these frames right. 
And Brett Blevins, by the way, is a brilliant illustrator. Yeah. He would be the best illustrator at this time at Disney Animation Studios, working on Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. Like, he is a premier illustrator. He was a poor choice for a family of X-Men books that were super macho, okay? Wolverine's killing people all over the place. They've given him his own series. He's knifing people left and right. He's standing on 100 dead bodies every issue. He's the featured character. Mark Silvestri has women taking off their clothes all the time, taking baths in, in convenient waterfalls in the pages of the X-Men. And then, wait, kids, this is what you want from your mutant. Caw, caw. <laughs> and Bird Brain is, is featured the way that they featured Colossus when the X-Men relaunched. He was supposed to be a character of focus. He is the cover. He is featured on cover after cover. Bird brain, uh, the 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 very dull, very uninteresting, very non-aggressive New Mutants. So I am asked to step in, and as I've told you many times, I was offered X Factor. Do you want to follow Walt Simonson on X Factor? Hell no, hell no. Why would I follow a Hall of Fame great when I can go give this book exactly what it needs? Again, let's get it on tape. Here I am, Brett Blevins, brilliant illustrator a bad fit for a X-Men book, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Now, I believe I was able to prove that opinion out by everything that followed. And also the character focus. Your character focus completely shifts with here. You wanted to talk about Cougar. I just never got around to bringing him in because I saw how everything I, this was a, this was a franchise starving for a star. Okay. Like the, in the basket, in the basketball world, the new means was the Sacramento Kings. 15 years between playoff appearances. And last night, oh, they're going back to the playoffs for the first time in 15 years. Oh, this this once left behind franchise, okay? That's the New Mutants, man. Every It had been left behind. And so little Robbie Liefeld says, and, and yes, I will call my teenage, my young 20 self little Robbie Liefeld. They're like, can you come in here and, and fix this? And literally Bob Harris says, Rob, what about putting an adult figure? And I'm like, yeah, let me, let me put a commando guy and he's going to be from the future and he's going to have ties to the X-Men family and all this. And they're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. And here you see wild side. Uh, you see strobe, you see Reaper, you see the great Thumbelina. Okay. Those are all my characters. Also Marvel age did a two part feature called Rob Liefeld's new mutant sketchbook. It was so it was such a big deal. They did two issues of it. That it that is that is part of time itself. That is historical recorded fact. And as you know, so there the, and there's tempo. So I had a young blood illustration for Megaton. She's in it. Yep. Again, but you know you know what? So so there's a perfect example. Uh, tempo suddenly is co-created by someone else who had Jack and shit to do with the co-creation. But you know that walking in. There was nothing. I didn't have blinders on. I'm like, yeah, this is bullshit. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to gamble. I'm going to gamble. If I can plant 25 trees and 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 be have some of that fruit come over on my side of the fence and feed my family, good for me. But you know it going in. But in years past, when people go, oh, that's a co-creation, I'm like, what part of the co-creation happened without me. I'd love to know. I would love to know because I, as I've told people, because this is the easiest way to do it. I sold these characters to Marvel. Right. I said, I want to give these all cables. Part of it. When it came part, when it came to Cougar, as you know, I did a cover with Cougar. Yeah. Todd colored it. I mean, Todd inked it. It was about to go. I did yank him because I knew that maybe you also got to realize coach McFarlane would call me shortly after this. Oh, bud! Uh, what, what are you doing giving all those characters to Marvel? Like, you're making us look bad. We're, absolute sentence. They're, they're expecting all of us to give them characters now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, you do your thing, I'll do mine. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do my thing. Because my book is, like, this was a body that needed all the paddles. Right, guys? That's what they I remember about it. Say what? It, I, that's one of the things I remember about this book is it was right at the cutoff where low sales meant it would go direct market. And it was right there whenever you take over, like on the yeah. on the edge of going direct market due to those low sales. Yes. 
all part again of historical fact. The one thing, the one thing that I do on the raw observations is I go to the sales figures, I go to the rankings, and I show you guys because you know there's always somebody who wants to fight me. No, this was one of the top sellers. Horseshit. This by the so so I always forget that not only is it X Men which had gone by monthly, there's X Factor, there's Wolverine. I forgot about Excalibur. Excalibur with Alan Davis was burning up the charts. Every new book would bump the New Mutants in 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 relation to and 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 you guys, the Bird Brain stories are just an example of who the hell are they trying to uh, appeal to? Because I am an avid, even though I'm working in comics for a couple of years now. I buy all these books. I am on every Friday. That's when comics came out on Friday, not Wednesdays. Friday, you went to the comic store and, and I bought every mutant book. I bought everything. I needed to see what everybody was doing to stay competitive. And I bring that up because we'll come back to that. But go ahead. So uh, we know that your character's name is Cable, but they wanted to yes. call him something else. And no, 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 no. All right. All right. Fix it. So, so, fix so, the so I submit him as Cable. Yeah. And then my editor says, Rob, what about... Uh, he either said, what about Commander X? And the writer, quotes, said Quinn or it's, or flip it. I was given, hey, Rob, what about? And right there I said, if his name is not Cable, I'm out. Like, I, I'll just withdraw him. I, I will not submit him. Isn't that funny how co-creation goes? <laughs> uh, I'm supposedly sharing that creation with someone, yet I determined that character's very existence. So, so, um, and you know what your read, your followers, I don't care if they hate me. I hate you back. You know, I, I love that. Um, the thing is they need to know these are absolute spoken truths, uh, that, 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 that no one likes to actually put them under the magnifying glass, but that is 100% the truth. My editor, I think was just trying to be an editor, throw another suggestion out there. The other person was like, I need to contribute because there's nothing in this book. That's mine. Okay. But I'm like, cable or nothing, that's it. Are you plotting at this point? Uh, I I did not draw what I was given on any of these pages. Now, Todd and I were part of... Oh, shit. I tried not to do this anywhere else. I'm already so bad. I don't want to be seen as a rabble rouser. But we would just... Eh, okay, I'm taking what I'm keeping and I'm not doing that. Like... More, okay do you think this is a, okay do you think in the perfect example do you think in the plot that this says a double page strip across the t no no i did this i'm like i'm gonna make this badass as shit like i am gonna but i had i but it was page two and three so i had to figure out a way to fit everything else on in, in essence keep them moving but no guys i am am i credited yet as but have I been promised? Have I been promised that if I make an impact, I get to write the book already before I start this? Yes, it's part of why I took the gig. Um, I was negotiating at the same time with Danny Fingeroth to take over writing and drawing Alpha Flight. And they were about to give it to me. And Todd, Todd is my witness on this too, because he's like, oh, it's not good enough for them to let you write and draw. You, you gotta ask for number one, launch it. I go, they just relaunched Alpha Flight. He goes, launch it again. So Marvel knew, um, again, because I want to reiterate uh, to both you guys, um, the Rob Liefeld of this time is turning down assignments right and left. Yeah. Uh, spectacular Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man are mine for the taking. Jim Salacrap is like, Rob, just come over and have fun with us and the Spider-Man. They don't need you in the X office. Come on over. And yes, he talks to the like Snagglepuss. And uh, and and he kept saying, like, come, come to Spider-Man. Come to Spider-Man. Because Jim Salakrup and Todd McFarlane were competitive. They wanted to, you know, I just didn't have the natural love for Spider-Man. I'm turning down Doctor Strange. I'm turning down Alpha Flight. So when I'm drawing this, I'm not trying to keep my job. I mean, I, I've taken on an assignment that I think I can win in regards to keeping the New Mutants not only published, but get the sales up. But each and every page and the insight to the guys at this time, we're competing with each other. This is a murderer's row of guys making comics at this time, you know? Gail Keown's coming on Hulk. Eric Larson's doing Punisher and Spider-Man. Todd's on Spider-Man. Jim's doing Punisher and X-Men. Wills is doing Punisher and X-Men. You know, Mark is there as, as just a phenomenal talent. Mark Teixeira is getting smart. He's been around since like 1982, but he's honing his skills. Hugely competitive time. 
hugely competitive time. So bottom line, like I need to show Thumbelina using her powers, right? I made a, and I wanted to make a kind of a, a chunky person into somebody who, nobody, we hadn't seen a, a, a more, a, a thicker person get small and get big before. So, I mean, again, uh, Ed, Jim, I am putting whatever I want in this uh, because if this reads like any New Mutants comic prior, let me know. The answer is no. And then you have to go, well, then why is it this like Bird Brain? And why isn't this like all those cipher comics? Okay. Now, you guys, you know, you know I'm speaking truth here. I, no, no, no. I'm here for the ride. Yeah, it's super fun, man. Uh, this is this Zero character. Is this, uh, I remember you saying something about uh, Rob Liefeld. Uh, no, no, Rob Liefeld. About Todd talking about uh, how he's just doing a one character book and yeah he has webs and things but it's a simple character and then you're like all right man well i'm gonna make zero and it's just a body with some zeros on it you know zero was in my sketchbook i thought he looked bomb ass shit and i said he can teleport everybody you gotta have a teleporter right and having a zero on your face it looks disturbing now again <laughs> later on you're gonna go you've already kind of clued me in that's why i came in hot with my freaking hair up on fire as, as if i don't have enough calyx um, the thing is, uh, uh, I've had people later in life go, you were doing Dr. Manhattan. And I'm like, what? But uh, yeah, because Dr. Manhattan's power set. Okay. Dr. Manhattan has, has a face and is blue. But dude, Zero is just a good looking character. And, he, and, he, and, and I like creepy, silent characters. That's not a face mask. Right. That's oh, his face. So nothing is obscuring his mouth. Zero has no mouth. There's a little bit of difference. But anyway, so... This is the mother effing pig from <laughs> uh, Boom. The vids are brought to you by the books that we make in 2023 is going to be a big year for us here at Cartoonist Kayfabe. Uh, to start, I want to promote the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. It's going to come out in uh, in uh, October, I believe, later this year. But you can get your pre-orders in now. Red Room Crypto Killers is my next comic that is going to be coming to comic shops in May. Put in your pre-orders at your local shop with that right now. There will be various flavors of colors to go covers to go along with that, including a sketch cover that a lot of people have been asking for. So if you uh, grab this cover and you draw something, make sure you tag me online with that. Uh, there's the Eddie P variant, Jim Rugg, by way of Rob Liefeld, very appropriate for this video, and uh, the cottage industry herself, Peach Momoko. Did a variant cover for Red Room Crypto Killers number one. Two volumes of Red Room out there. Four volumes Hip Hop Family Tree. Three volumes of X Men Grand Design and WYSIWYG. Jimmy, what do you have? My next book, Street Angel Princess of Poverty, will be out later this spring from Image Comics. It collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadliest Girl Alive. You can pre order that one now at your local comic shop. You can also pick up Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive from Image Comics back in print. The Plain Janes, the first graphic novel for young adults and Hulk Grand Design, recently published by Marvel Comics in a giant treasury size fluorescent green package that you cannot miss. All right, we're done paying the bills, man. Let's get back to Uncle Rob. Drum roll, boom! <laughs> Bob check on the inks. Yeah. Good job, with you did this, a great job. With this stuff. Crushed it, crushed it. And what's the, you know, you're on the West, publishing offices on, on the East. Yeah. How does that work in terms of deadline and stuff like that so you know the thing is um look uh we we made a lot of crazy runs to fedex so marat and i are in my one of my favorite studios if you ever watch there's a cnn segment about the arrival of uh of image comics yeah and uh brega's there marat's there mark silvestri's there eric's there todd's not there that's this office we the cnn um the West Coast guys all drove because I had a giant office. It was in an industrial park and it had super high ceilings. We could play basketball in there. We would play basketball in there with the with the hoops that we had set up, um, portable hoops. The reason everybody came, but it has my personal private uh, law. I, there's stairways that went to a loft. And I like this page is me at the table on at the loft. Marat is there during this time. And uh, Marat was, you know, kind of what a role dog is except he was the studio dog you know, like he you know he was uh he'd make copies but the the main thing was he kept me company 
and he would ride with me to FedEx so I can get the carpool lane uh, every other day. Mm -hmm. So those FedEx bills were pretty big, but yeah, I was, I would just, uh, Ed, get, I mean, we, we, that on deadline days, I mean, I may have stayed up 48 hours, you know, you just know that clock is there. You got to get it. You got to get it. You got to get, you don't want demerits. And I need to, I need to keep, uh, keep, keep, keep everyone's faith in me on doing this book. Uh, but yeah, so, so, but, but big cable arriving. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, I turned down buying this page. Uh, the guy who owned it in 2017, I have a leather chair right there. I go back to it all the time. He offered it to me for $28,000 to buy it back. And I said, ah, it just feels like that's stupid. I couldn't explain that to my family. Like, hey, dad bought his own artwork back. Mm -hmm. And so then I said, but I can put you in touch with a buyer who will buy it. And I wanted that buyer to buy it so I could go home, go over to his house and see it <laughs> as much as I wanted. But shit, that, that page is over 100K now. Uh, it, mediocre we're gonna get to new mutants 98 and yeah. mediocre new mutants 98 page sold for almost it sold for ninety two thousand dollars. holy crap holy crap i i should have my head examined not writing 28k out that minute well, like, well here's, back. here's a here, well here's a question because we know yeah. that there's there's a division of pages amongst uh writers right. and, and and inkers uh do you get to have some say in that is the editor taking care of that so you are allowed to lobby and and b both the editorial staff as well as the guy who worked in the art returns. But you got to understand this is a really sore subject. It's I'll, I'll just gloss over it really, you know, but I've, I've made it public over the last decade or so. That issue of X-Men that I did 245 and I did an issue of X-Factor, my art was never returned. And they said, oh, we lost it. And I said, well, then, you know, you guys should reimburse me for it. And Tom DeFalco was the one time he got really kind of gruff with me. And he said, look, that's our gift to you. If we lost the gift, we're sorry, but there is no financial, you know, restitution to be had here. And you're just going to have to take this one. We're sorry. We hope, we hope it shows up. I haven't seen those pages for um, whoever has them. If they didn't go to the shredder, uh, I don't see them. Now, one person said he saw one like the splash page with the alien from 245. And I assume maybe Dan Green got that back. Maybe Dan Green got a bunch of them back. But like you took your shots, but you would you would lobby. Now, again, the only page ever inked by Jim Lee. Jim Lee inked me on Marvel Comics Presents to help me out on a deadline. I gave him the best page. Chris Ivey got that page back and sold that knowing he did not ink that page. He got so and I signed that for somebody in 2004 and was just shocked. And he's like, oh, I bought this from Chris Ivey. So, dude, Artwork returns was the wild, wild west. If the art dealer, if the art guy, you could lobby him. But as I'm telling you now, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Man, I've never hey, heard Asgard, of we shouldn't get these kids out of Asgard and back to the good shit fast enough. But you, you leave Danny Proudstar up there. So I guess you know, she's not going to make the cut to X-Force. No way. And, 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 and I'm just trying to make as many pretty women in this. Like, look, again, I'm telling you, I'm trying to focus on whatever I can to sell the damn comic, you know, um, it, 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 it was nerve wracking, uh, especially the issue prior to this prior to cable was already written. So I'm just drawn that I have no input in it whatsoever, but, uh, I understand to get the kids back. We have to get them out of, uh, Asgard, but I don't have a whole lot of emotional attachment to any of these kids. Um, the, obviously the only one I really bonded with, was Sam in, 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 and, and I thought, look, boom, boom, we got to have, uh, an attractive female, you, you know, you can't have just all guys. And, and, and again, that in that exact same age, I mean, you've got Silvestri and I, I, I said this to Silvestri, we're in the green room waiting to go on for the X-Men 60th a couple of weeks ago on the Marvel, um, celebration on their, on their website. And I said to him, I said, dude, we all were looking at the way you depicted Females, Storm, Rogue, Dazzler, and Polaris. And I mean, he had a murderer's row of gorgeous women. And I covered this on my podcast too. The, the age of the hot babe has started with the Marvel Sports Illustrated issues, which I'm not sure they could do today. You know, I'm <laughs> not sure they could do those. Not the way they were doing them. Those are like, like, let's have you, have you guys done that on your show? No, we haven't yet. Oh, oh, you will have a heyday. You, I mean, like, <laughs> Like it's it's storm under a waterfall with their giant ass out. Like that's not getting published today ever. 
So, so like, I just know, and again, you guys know, you know this, Todd sexed Mary Jane up. The one thing that the whole world was wa- was awakening to was Todd McFarlane. Todd would be like, I, I sorting those skirts. I gave her like stiletto heels. Like she, Mary Jane had a super makeover under Todd McFarlane. And so you're like, even Todd understands, uh, I, I got to have the hot babe. So I, I got young babes that I'm trying to work with here. So sorry for the side commentary. And also, Rain doesn't make uh, the cut into X Force. You're going to send that off to Peter David and Larry Stroman to to go do their X Factor joint. Have fun. Enough <laughs> angst for one book. Oh, I'm a wolf. I'm a wolf. And now my kid's on a show where he's a werewolf. Okay. How funny is that? Okay. Anyway. And and Rusty and Skids like they're not even remembered. No. Well, they they weren't they weren't really pure. Look again. You guys know um, now. Now here, here's here's another thing. Who do I focus on in that in that hospital room? I try and give a pretty, you know, shot of 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 skids. But also, I got to make a deadline. So let's just draw one face and close up, close up, close up, and get out of that page, okay? Because I got cooler shit to draw. So when you would deliver that, would would you draw the first one and tell why I check just to enlarge stats? Yes, yes. No Photoshop, just. Um, each one getting closer, closer, closer. Yes. And and then production would do it. Wow. So if the you're... Frank Miller TV screen, the Frank Miller TV screen, there it is. Yeah, boy. Really... Uh, so you, as Penciler, uh, is when you do something like Warlock, like, do you got to pencil that tightly? I and, do. Yeah. Um, I, I that, that is, um, those are 100%. Like I said, Bob Wyacek, just kicked ass on this and you know what bob can be an incredible finisher um or he can look these guys at this time the 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 word was going around al milgram didn't ink like al milgram of the 70s and 80s he started trying to ink like terry austin bob bob wyacek went very linear and i really believe the reason is they all wanted to get a crack at inking art adams and did because terry austin couldn't always ink art adams he and and I even I've even talked to Terry and Terry was like art, one page of art was like three pages of somebody else. It would take up three times. So he couldn't always ink art, even though he loved inking art. The time consumption. So what happened is, you know, the art Adam style, which we're all biting off at this point. There's not a single one of the people that I mentioned who is not in some way interacting with art and his style. Uh, very ex- extremely inf- and then people will pivot to michael golden no michael golden is a different influence yes art adams was sucking off that tit but he had different influences that we responded to as well that made up the art adams style the bob wyacek al milgram those guys changed to this very brittle inking style because if you go back i mean bob wyacek used to be like a bob mcleod joe rubenstein capability still could sweet guy very versatile I, hats off to these guys they, they wanted to ink the next generation of guys, keep their own careers fresh, and get those sweet royalties from those mutant books. So I benefited from that at the time. But we would all, I mean, honestly, nobody wanted Al Milgram. I mean, I didn't, Todd didn't, Eric didn't. Um, so if you could get Bob Wyatt, he was probably the second best inker available at the time. This is as Scott Williams is happening. Scott is kind of coming into his own. Right. So he's on the rise. But the dependable guys that are available are ta- uh, ta- Terry Austin and Bob Wyatt. So you uh, pencil in extra tight, just knowing that you have uh, these these anchors who are going to do uh, the there, final there, piece, or do you leave a little up for interpretation? There is nothing left to interpretation. When I show Xeroxes of this time, it tells the story. It tells the story. Yeah, it's bits like this where it's like, that's a complicated drawing, and... You know, it's if, all draw. I I penciled in everything there because I I didn't want to trust X X X. Right. I just kind of wanted as complete as possible. I remember at the time, uh, I would go back and visit Valentino at his studio, and even Marat. They're like, "Man, that warlock, he's a chore." Um, <laughs> so you know, all too happy to 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 uh, you know, he wasn't on my list when they're like, "Who do you want to go forward?" Uh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> But you, but you do introduce strife into the mix, and uh, when when the, another, yep, when the when the toys and stuff start to happen after X Force is out and everything, and it, yep. and the 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 X Men toys would have like a whole aisle 
in uh in in like a hills department store the friends of mine who did not read comics which were many i was pretty much the only dude uh they knew strife and they had that strife figure that helmet the spikes all of that was uh totally of the time everybody was into that sort of thing it's interesting that warlock gets a cut as being you know overly complex boy strife has a lot of complexity in that design as well uh, it is overly indulgent, Jim. I will not. I do laugh when I look at this because, look, I'm, I'm I'm trying to do a couple things here. I'm trying to give them their villain, okay? They haven't had their villain. The New Mutants is the strangest, okay? Look, real quick, when Bill Sienkiewicz came on the New Mutants, I flipped out. I loved it because I had followed him from Moon Knight, everything he did. I saw what he was doing artistically. Marvel will tell you, much like Mignola on X-Force 8, Fans just flipped out. That's not what they wanted, which is shocking that they wanted kind of a, a at, the, at the time, whatever style Buscema New Mutants was happening before and after Sienkiewicz. It's hard to understand that that was something that, I guess sometimes you just stick with the safe play. But once Sienkiewicz leaves, then, then the New Mutants, and that was this artistic, you know, obviously we don't get Warlock without Sienkiewicz and Warlock is seminal. Um, like to, to the impact of Sienkiewicz's entire run. But uh, the entirety of the time, they don't have a bad guy. They don't have a nemesis. And so, you know, I am trying to, you know, as fast as I can establish uh, in the same issue with Cable and then Strife, you know, to a yin and a yang here. And I'm also going, well, I want him armored. I want him badass. That reads dangerous to me from you know, Dr. Doom on down, but how do I not make him Dr. Doom? And then I, yeah, he kind of looks like Silver Samurai, but I'll give him a red cape and I'll give him spikes. And I'm going to tell you a true story. In between uh, Deadpool 1 and 2, I am at Blur Studios with Tim Miller. And Tim says, Robbie, I don't know how we're going to pull off uh, Strife because the last scene in Deadpool 2 was supposed to have Whoever was playing, Josh was not Cable at the time, but Strife was going to be revealed in the last, in the, in the, whatever, the, the after credit scene. And Tim goes, I don't know how I'm going to pull that off. Now, here's the thing. Tim has a bunch of Brian, I'm sorry, a bunch of uh, Randy Bowen statues on his work table at Blur Studios, his, his company. <clears throat> and he's got a gladiator from Imperial Guard. He's got a Ghost Rider. He's got all these Bowen. And I said, "What do you mean he can't? You can't pull him off on, on uh, on film?" He was like, "Oh man, that costume." I said, "Bowen has a kick-ass statue of Stripe." And he goes, "Get the hell out of here!" And I'm like, "I have it. It's at my house. Google it right now." And I sat there, and he goes, "Shit, that, wow, that works." <laughs> and I'm telling you guys, because. Watch, I break it right here on the <laughs> Like, I'm like, Tim, this works. You don't think it's going to work. But this mofo is badass. Look at that. Look at that. And that literally, he's like, okay. He literally said, you, you've you made me believe we can pull Strife off. Because he made such a kick at you. You know, he, he knew there was action figures. But I think this was the one. So, but again, then Tim left the movie. And Strife never quite made it. But, <clears throat> um, you know... This this last weekend there was a at WonderCon, I was there only for to, to to see my kid who was on a panel for his show, and there was a strife walking around and he was getting oohs and ahs and people were losing their nut. I mean, and 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 I'm seeing more and more strife. I, I I love that he has not been left behind. I mean, and he is a real compl. I mean, this may be the most '90s because again, how does he sit down? <laughs> and trust me, as I draw it, it's just one of those things that you go, it's comic books. Who gives a shit? Like, um, you know, Magne why does Magneto's helmet never fall under his eyes? Okay. <laughs> right. At some point, it would. Okay. <laughs> but it's always perfectly fit and it never. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, uh, you know, so anyway, I just, I, I love me some strife. And again, <laughs> that th this is the capper of all the MLF guys that did not exist prior to me coming on. And I say that with great pride. And if you created the MLF and if you created Strife and if you created Cable, you would say it with great pride too. It's just, this is very exciting to me. Again, this is the evening. Now, like 
Like that cable page, that's middle of the day I'm drawing that page, okay? And that matters to me. Those memories matter to me. We were and just you talking are about that like, stuff. And, and I'm like, and I'm like, I think this is the best possible introduction for him. And I'm using my, you know, how to draw comics the Marvel way, tilting the angle, you know, don't do it straight, tilt that camera, give that low angle. Um, and this is in the evening. And I'm like, well, I hope that I sure do hope they like strife. Um, so anyway, <laughs> you know, like showing up, showing us that, sh that strife statue and stuff. And I'm looking behind you. I see all those, those Deadpool yeah. items and things. Uh, not interested in, in numbers or anything like that, but like, I wonder if part of your deal when you created characters, do you get like one copy of every licensed thing or something? Was that part of the you Marvel know, deal? Um, I, I never, I was, that, that's the bad part of the business that I didn't think about that. But the great part is, um, all of these gazillion dollar worth of statues, I get mailed to me free. I mean, you guys, I got, uh, th there's a, I can't even keep track of, I don't want to say the wrong, um, company but there's another deadpool and they're like rob we want to send this to you from korea um here and and i get i get hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise sent to me by the people like the deadpool video game in 2013 that that was sent directly to me i didn't get that from marvel i got that sent to me by the whoever produced it the the, the company they unfortunately went out of business but yeah i'm i'm i i wish i did but no marvel does not um you know, comps was never their strong suit. It, it wasn't when I got hired. I don't think it's, it still is. I think they, it's, it's especially with merchandise items. Fair. This is an aside, but uh, yeah. you, you talk about the participation uh, deal that you signed. And I don't know that that deal exists anymore. Maybe it's up to people to negotiate, but do you, do you think that that's a mistake on Marvel's part if they want to inject new characters and new ideas? Cause I mean, you look at their history and it feels like that 90s era, your characters are some of their last successful new characters. And you know what, Jim? I mean, look, I, I was, you know, the body was willing, the mind was able. I, 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 again, there was no part of this because of the comics journal and Amazing Heroes. And look, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of what you guys have with your show. You educate people. Um, we're here educating people right now because I read all those magazines and Claremont, I'd go to the shows with him. He would talk about character participation and he would talk about how important that was. And so I went into it knowing, and it was, it was something I willingly embraced. And I'm going to tell you, I just feel like, uh, today they have to compete. You know, Jim Shooter in his interview said the only reason he went to even a model that resembled that was because he knew he had to compete with the first comics, the eclipse comics, all of the, you know, and he wanted to keep his people happy who were going to obviously be, lo be looking in that direction. I'm not, you know, I don't know that Marvel feels they can compete. So, and I think at a corporate level, I, when I, when you say, are they making a mistake? They are now part of such a huge, uh, I mean, so Jim, let me, let, me, let, me, let me give it to you this way. Batman has teamed up with the Turtles in the last 20 years. He's teamed up with the Power Rangers, you know, He's available to all. Marvel doesn't share. Disney doesn't share. Before Marvel got bought by Disney, I was told by my friends at Disney. And look, my sister worked at Disney for years. They don't like to share. Uh, they don't want to, um, you know, they don't want Mickey Mouse stand. The, the fact that they shared in Jessica Rabbit is because Steven Spielberg sweet talked them into it as a producer. Um, and, 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 and you saw those characters coincide and it was such a big deal. It was such a seminal moment. But since Disney bought Marvel, you, you know, there is no crossovers. They are not going to share the spotlight with any other published characters. And that, that's just a glimpse of, it's just, there's, there's not a, we don't share is a Disney mantra. So that's my answer. Uh, I think that's why you're getting versions. I mean, come on, man. How many Iron Man are there? Out? How many people have wielded the hammer? How many Spider-Mans um, are there? It, we've gone into that, the derivative. We are in the age of the derivative. Because of, you know, and the people like, like the people who made Wolverine, they don't, I believe that predates those deals. My deals were contracts. Those had to be, uh, those go back to 1989 and, and those had to be honored, uh, in, in the switch. So like I said, I'm, I'm one of the few, you know, I mean, and there's Venom, Venom's in there too, you know, with Michelini and Todd and however that works. Almost I don't know if that answered your question. Almost by the end of this issue, like all the chaff is gone and we're looking at 
Rob's characters exclusively. It's very efficient. There's a lot that happens in this issue. Wonka, Wonka, Wonka. Dude, dude, <laughs> dude, dude. These, this, again, how am I going to, you know, I got to sell, I got to sell my character. I'm introducing a character. I have seen how characters get introduced and, 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 and you got to put them through your paces. You got to have big action. I choreographed all this stuff. You know, I, I, so this is also, there are interviews you can find with both John Romita Jr. and John Byrne. John Byrne wrote a couple years worth of Iron Man and J.R. illustrated them. And, and that, that was right around maybe a year prior to this, that that started. And they would both talk openly. John Byrne would give him a page. That's it. And J.R. would break it down. So what I said to, when I'd get like, I'd read a plot, I'd put it to the side and I'd maximize it for my effort and send it back to get scripted. Cause I, you know, I'm not doing the word balloons, but uh, you know, so, so I love that you are literally acknowledging that none of these characters existed in the book prior to this, this issue. And, and they're getting a giant spotlight here. And for a reason we're establishing the MLF as the new bad guys. And we're establishing cable as a man of mystery. <laughs> Happy times. And then, hey, let's fly around the Statue of Liberty. Oh, I love this shit. I love this. And again, let's let's show off our 1982 fashion in 1989. You know, <laughs> hi, I'm Boom Boom. I'm this. I'm still dressed like Madonna with, with borderline. Screw like a virgin. I'm, I'm dressed like Madonna in her, you know, first album. And I'm I'm Billy Idol. I'm Richter. Look at my leather shirt with my bare chest. Give me the rebel yell. I'm like, I've been out of high school now for six, seven years. And Billy Idol was my sophomore year. Like, this is crushing me. I This is hysterical. But I don't have time to change their, you know, where did they get new costumes heading home from Asgard, right? You know? You know so they had to put on they had to put on their sweet 80s gear you know rob what would be funny as shit man with all this stuff you're talking about is just have this damn thing fly right into the hudson <laughs> river and they all just perish just fly this and, thing right into the cannibal, statue of liberty yes and cannibal <laughs> flies out of the river and says i survived <laughs> but then he um, explodes oh no yeah. yeah cannibal yeah yeah he was your boy oh, cannibal survives yeah. going back through this issue this week to, to prep for this, that's what stood out to me was yeah. like, this is a different, you know, from the two pages we just saw to this, it was like, yeah, just taking a Sharpie marker through these characters. It, it looks yeah. like a different era. Cause look, the whole thing was we had to get the, um, we had to get the membership down. That's what, look, so, so to, to take over the book, like I said, it, they offered me X factor and you guys, you remember stuff like this because you remember taking uh, look, they did a an HBO show on the Lakers, and they very much wanted to show you in that first season where Nike tried to give the deal that they would eventually give to Michael Jordan. They tried to give that to Magic Johnson. He wouldn't go for it. Shares in Nike weren't enough for him. In the middle of the show, they break the fourth wall and tell you what Ma Magic Johnson passed up. He didn't take that gamble. He wanted that guaranteed money. I was being wooed to take over X Factor and my editor was doing his job. Oh, Rob, the royalties, the royalties. I talk about this. Mark Silvestri drove a silver Porsche. His girlfriend looked like she walked out of a white snake video. She actually looked 10 times more to, to young men of 1988. Let's put this all in our safe canopy so I don't get in trouble. To young 20-year-old men of 1980, you know, Mark's girlfriend looked like she could eat Tawny Katane for lunch. Like she was taller, sexier, funnier, big smile. Mark was, I mean, Jerry Ordway, Mike Zek and I in 1988 are in the Hotel San Diego waiting to go to dinner. The door opens up. Mark comes out dressed all suave, Rico Suave, shirt unbuttoned, sweet long hair. And she is in a painted on micro mini dress with the highest heels. And Jerry Ordway goes, is, is she? And I said, that's his girlfriend. No, that's his girlfriend. There was an implication. And I said, mm. no, Jerry, that that's his girlfriend. He's like, are you serious? I go, <laughs> you know when he lives in a house on Malibu? I was at Mark's house on the beach in Malibu. Silver Porsche and supermodel girlfriends. This dude worked at a gym 
before he he drew the X Men. He was lifting weights. He was <laughs> and like Todd would be like, oh, but Sylvester, he's making the big bucks. Those X Men royalties and Chris Claremont would tell fans across from tables how oh I love those royalties. These guys wanted to tell you how rich they were. Okay, they wanted to tell us how well off. They're wooing me. Come to X Factor, Rob. It sells three hundred thousand. You're gonna make sweet royalties. I'm like, I'm not following Walt Simonson. That's not happening. That's a bad career move. I've talked about that. Sometimes you gotta say no. Like sometimes yes is the worst thing you could say. New Mutants was in. I mean, it was barely like you said, Jim, at the at the beginning of this. My first issue of the New Mutants is the 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 numbers on the eighty six. So. I'm coming on board. It's so not my book. 107,000 copies. This goes to 116. In between issues, we already are bumping. And we're going to start this climb. But I, I took a risk. and But to take the risk, I sat down with Bob and I said, I need this, 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 this. And I literally was like, I hate the way this book is. I think, and Bob would say, Rob, there's a reason we're having this talk. I want to change direction. I don't like where the book is. I think it's problematic. I'm trying to bring in fresh blood. There are people at Marvel to this day that want to shit on Bob Harris. And I thought I was going to answer this 40 minutes ago when he asked me about back in the day in the FedEx. He does not get enough credit as the new GM walking in and going, I'm putting you here. You're gone. You're gone. You're gone. You're gone. They're in. I'm betting on this new group. And he changed comic books. He absolutely changed. You want to say for better or for worse, that's your problem, not you guys, but whoever has a, a, a positive or negative, but he changed comics. He he was the editor of the Hulk, and then he got the X-Men gig, and he just said, I'm going to reshuffle the deck, and part of it was taking a risk, which is why, you know, we get this, uh, you know, you, you you end the issue on this new man of mystery. Yeah, look at that poison on his uh, face, man. And, and uh you know, the, the, the MLF has come in and we are calling, like you, you, you mentioned calling the herd. We are, we are rusty and skids. It's too many characters. You're gone. We're, we're you're, you know, they weren't, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you where they weren't going the issue before this. They weren't going to the MLF before I came on because the MLF didn't exist. Okay. So there was, so, so the life felt impact. If you're going, are you doing the stories? Of course I am having tremendous input on these stories. Otherwise I'm not doing this book. I have other gigs because like I said, dude, I, I want those people. I want them to know because it, 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 I'd be stupid. I love rubbing people's face in their own mucus. Um, <laughs> Bob Liefeld was one of the most sought after pencilers. I had, you know, the, the editor of Dr. Strange chewed me out, told me I'd regret turning him down. And I'm like, Nope, but let, I said, no, Butch Geist said yes. Butch Geist was a way better artist than I was at that time. He couldn't do, because I said, unless I have input on that story, and unless Dr. Strange battles the Ditko, I don't want anything to do with, oh, no, we're making him an occult investigator. Goodbye. You're making a big mistake. Yelled at me. Ralph Macchio yelled at me on the phone. I Yells at me. You're making a terrible mistake. You're going to regret this. I don't think so. You know, Bob Harris, hey, Rob, let's have a talk about X Factor. I don't think so. Uh, hey, Jim Salak, Rob, come be alongside your buddy Todd. Do Spider-Man. I don't think so. My history is totally different. If I go, I do. If I do spectacular Spider-Man, we're not talking right now. I'm Ron Lim. Okay, so that 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 you know to, to act like um, I didn't carve my path is is ridiculous. And again, I, I want these people to know I am an in-demand guy. But what I'm doing on every page is I am trying to win my showcase and prove them it was right for you to bet on me. Rob, you, um, you have your this conversation, a lot of what you're saying is really smart thinking business, you know, making smart decisions in terms of your business, your path, opportunities that these things have in front of you. That's a conversation that I don't hear with a lot of cartoonists. And and we have the benefit of having seen image come and, and yeah. you know, being conscious of having more options. Was it, were other pencilers and artists and cartoonists that you were around, were other guys thinking this way? Were you having these conversations with your peers besides a Todd, Todd McFarlane? Was, was Ron Lim talking about this kind of stuff? Like, this is a good 
opportunity for my career. This is a good opportunity for me to really showcase what I can do. Was that happening with other people? I would never have um, invited as many people to Image Comics. Uh, what I'm getting to is th there's an entire episode of everyone who turned down Todd McFarlane. Uh, the people who formed Image all thought alike. We, the answer to your question is, that's all we got. <clears throat> Todd offered, he hard sold Mark Teixeira, who was hot on Ghost Rider at the time. He had chats with Dale Keown, and Dale would just kind of blow him off. Um, I'm sure at some point, Ron was, somebody approached him. They, I, I can't believe they didn't. I certainly didn't. Uh, my trust meter was really low. Eric and I, understood each other valentino and i understood each other todd came around i want to say jim came kicking and screaming to image because that's how i remember it uh once somebody made an intellectual kind of pitch to mark and that was todd alone i remember mark was a no and then at a diner in new york city todd and mark went and sat alone we were all there for an x-men summit and the sotheby's auction where x-men number one and x-force number one were being auctioned so that kind of all brought us to New York that weekend. Mark walked over after about 90 minutes with Todd and said, I'm in. I'm in. Todd convinced him. He sold Mark into the system. And I think Mark will always feel like that was a benefit that he had that conversation. But we all grew up watching Frank Miller openly talk about the moves he made and John Byrne and George Perez and all and Jim Starlin and Howard Chaikin. So the information, the data was there. I truly believe you are the last generation I think of guys who who were influenced by us at all. I now look at today's comic books and we're old fossils to them. And what we did, I don't even think, you know, I, I truly, we finally, I wouldn't have said that five years ago, but we're there now. We're absolutely there now. That the it's uh it it's that that kind of long form thinking it is over. But the one thing that hasn't changed is Marvel is still the biggest platform you can project your signal from. If you're a new guy coming into the business, uh, it was not customary whatsoever for uh, for reprints to to happen. Certainly at that point in time, but there was a reprint of this issue. Uh, yeah. What 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 was that conversation? Did, did you get a call quick? Hey, man, like they're they're completely sold out. We're going into reprints. Did that come later? So uh, the historic. Okay, I'm going to tell you something right now. The history behind that gold reprint is recorded wrong. That gold reprint comes out with X-Force number one. Okay. They queued that up to coincide with uh, the release of X-Force number one because they were like, crap, we could probably go back and have another bite at the apple. This has been so hot. That was Marvel really with some forward thinking, connecting a lot of dots. And uh, because the, the, the reprint of that did not come out until again a year later because they're like, well, X-Force... Cable's new team, let everybody know. And of course, you know, the reprint sold, you know, half a million. <laughs> wow. Which, which Our, a a found hard. money. No, it, you know, Marvel's still really good at it. I just look at the catalog. They are great at putting things back on the deck at the time, you know, that they believe is uh, going to be the most appreciated for that item. And look, I, you guys got to understand whether it's by... Uh, I have a good relationship with Marvel. Uh, it's not great. It'll never be great, but I have as good of one that I could have. Um, you know, I have an editor in chief who was your guy's age, who will come out and wants to go to the diner that I sketched the image eye on the napkin and CB is like, I was buying X-Force. I was buying new mutants. I was loving these books. So, you know, I I'm still in that cycle of appreciation with the people who were around at the time, but like, it's fun to watch Marvel when they flex and uh, and and they have, you know, they've been subject to all the same difficulties as everybody else through the pandemic. And I'm not going to put them up as some beacon of light. Would I give them a ton of new characters today? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I don't really feel like I have a ton of new characters to give anybody anymore. I, I emptied a giant payload out 30 years ago and still haven't completely, you know, exploited all of them in the way that I want, but you know, certainly as to what Jim said earlier, 
the, the company just from top to bottom as, as a Disney component is not set up that way. And the truth, truth be told, look how they take characters. Ant-Man was never a number one selling comic, but they were convinced that he should have three movies and, and get a big actor to star along him, uh, star, star as him, given that comic book movies are important. I think we're in a weird, pe- I think comic book movies are shifting and it's going to change some of everything going forward. So who knows, maybe five years from now, Marvel's like, we are investing in these five creators who have created these new characters. We've given them these great contracts. That could happen. Don't know. And rumor has it that Warlock and uh, that bunch of rapscallions are still flying off into the horizon, man. <laughs> they're still on that ship and they're still <laughs> off. Look, Ed, Ed, did you miss them? Did yeah. you miss them well, when they War- left? Warlock is dope, but as a person who not, who draws professionally himself, and I had to draw Warlock a couple times in my comic, I wasn't always looking forward to it. Sure. Yeah. It's a lot of pencil mileage for that mother effort, dude. Yeah. So, He's so, great. He is. Great comedy, great, great comedic relief, huge, but again, just too hard to draw. Yeah, here's what I will say, man. If Art Adams wanted to uh, just draw Warlock all the time, I would never say no. <laughs> no, or it'd, be, it'd be great. <laughs> so uh, let's let's get out of this episode, but before we do that, Rob, tell the people about Rob's observations and anything else that you might have going on right now. So uh, look, uh, I have Deadpool Batter Blood coming out this summer. I'd love for you to give it a shot. I think you'll have fun. Um, look, you, you guys understand it's why you're successful. It's the hand sell. You got to get out there and tell people, use your, use your social media, use your platforms, tell people to go and get, uh, the publisher's not going to, they don't have time to sell everything that they're publishing. The retailers are overwhelmed. So I have Deadpool batter blood coming out June 6th. I would hope that you pick it up. Uh, it's going to be a blast. My Rob observations podcast is generally twice a week. I just talk about comics. You won't hear me break down a trailer. Uh, it's not my thing. I'm trying to walk you through my history with comics as a fan, as a professional. Um, and, and that's what I do. So thanks a lot. Listen to Rob's observations. It's on every po- podcast platform. And that was the cable issue. Part two. Let's take a look at uh, the Deadpool joint. Yeah, man. We're going to do a part two where we jump ahead one year to see how cable was received. Did this plan work to overhaul new mutants or not? Let's find out in the next episode. <laughs>